Northwest Coast Raven's Tale Weaving, Yes Kuru, narrated by Lily Hope. Woven Chilcat or Raven's Tail Regalia is ceremonial apparel worn on the Northwest Coast, the blanket or robe being the centerpiece of an ensemble. Smaller ceremonial items accompany the dancing blankets, like dance aprons, leggings, headdress, and a pouch or bag. These are often adorned with fur, leather, fringes, and metal cones. Chilcat robes are symbols of wealth. Owning a woven blanket endows a clan leader with great prestige, and giving them away exhibits greater glory. Raven's tail weavings are currently used for artistic expression, as assertions of native identity, wealth, and are entering ceremonial use again. Raven's tail is a hand-twined weaving style practiced by the Clinket, Haida, Simshian, Nishka, and non-indigenous peoples of Southeast Alaska and into the Yukon and British Columbia of Canada. Only 11 historical raven's tail robes and four robe fragments exist in museums across the world. There are at least that many raven's tail robes now newly collected, being preserved in museums and private collections. One can visually identify the weaving style by evaluating their design fields. If it's mostly geometric with angles, boxes, and straight lines, think raven's tail. In contrast, if it has eyes, ovoids, and U-shapes, and curves mimicking the Northwest Coast formline art, think chilcat weaving. Since many weavers know both of these styles and blend them, you have to look more closely these days. Anthropologists used to refer to raven's tail as northern geometric weaving, since many designs are repeating geometric shapes. Early 1900s researcher George Emmons documented an old pattern that was known as the tail feathers of the raven, and Lewis Shotridge records indigenous ethnography as yes kuwu, the raven's tail. Canadian weaver and author Cheryl Samuel popularized the phrase raven's tail to replace northern geometric weaving. Yes Kuwu is now being woven every day. We're unsure how far back raven's tail weaving goes, only that it predates any preserved chilcat robes. Raven's tail weaving slept for nearly 200 years until Cheryl Samuel helped reawaken it in the 1980s. Bill Holm made her aware of very few old robes in museum collections, there were only 15 of these left in the world. Some were just fragments, some only pictures, but four whole robes were in St. Petersburg, Russia. She took photos, notes, and returned ready to try it out. Using her in-depth knowledge of Chilcat weaving, she recreated a raven's tail robe and then published the book, The Raven's Tail, and began teaching. Cheryl checked in with native elders in Canada and Alaska, verifying it was permissible to reawaken the sleeping raven's tail weaving. One of Cheryl's first students, Kay Parker of Juneau, Alaska, has been weaving and teaching since the early 1990s. Kay is the most prolific raven's tail weaver, maintaining the fidelity of raven's tail weaving as it has been practiced and recorded. She has taught hundreds of native and non-native artists. In addition to Samuel's studies and Kay's perseverance, indigenous weavers helped maintain basketry patterns in cedar bark and spruce root basketry, where 19 basketry patterns are recorded in raven's tail robes. We are now integrating their timeless expertise into what we're learning in contemporary raven's tail classes. Thus, this weaving form thrives today with hundreds of weavers, teachers, and students, both native and non-native, helping to carry this ancient practice forward. Raven's tail weavings are constructed on an upright loom with vertical hanging warp. Socks or little bags hold the long warp off the floor when making a robe. Thigh-spun mountain goat hair was traditionally used as warp as it could take seven whole hides to weave one robe, so now most thigh-spun warp is made of merino wool due to easy availability. It takes about a month to prepare and spin 800 to 1,000 yards of warp needed for an adult size robe. A spinner usually completes 50 yards a day maximum for avoidance of hand blisters and allowing completion of life's other daily tasks. Hand-dyed merino wool makes up the wefts of raven's tail weavings. Traditional dyes include wolf moss cooked in urine for a natural yellow, and for black, weavers could steep hemlock bark in old, strong urine. George Emmons' book, The Clinket Indians, has great details on traditional dye methods. Most weavers today use small batch commercially dyed weft yarns for easy accessibility and steadfastness of color. Raven's Tail uses nine variations of two and three strand finger twining techniques. These variations can lead to weaving concentric or one within another shapes like the side lying H figures, rectangles, or C shaped figures, all with the black tassels falling from the lower right corners. 
Frequently, the borders of Ravenstail weavings are spiral weft, where the weaver strand will spiral, haha, <laughs> around the warp, making almost applique-like lines. Ravenstail patterns can be woven right up against one another, which is called compact twining. An equally common technique is to leave one or two wefts worth of space between the rows, which is referred to as space twining. A raven's tail robe is usually white background with black design elements and the very sparing use of yellow. Although some weavers now use black warps and red wefts and more colors, making stunning variations of a traditional raven's tail weaving. Some artists prefer to call these Northwest Coast textiles woven using raven's tail technique. A few of the Northwest Coast weaving teachers are outwardly opposed to innovation in regards to design and creation of raven's tail weavings. We can tell from studying the relatively recent evolution of Raven's Tale into Chilcat that weavers of the past were not held back, but experimented in ways that would serve their people and traditions well. Geometric patterns gave way to curvilinear designs, rectangular Raven's Tale robes to five-sided Chilcat, and black and white to colors in brilliant blues and greens and yellow. What seems to be the most important is honoring our ancestors' spirits and stories and combining that with the energy of our current time. Therefore, as young weavers, we are embracing the spiritual responsibility of our teachers and look forward with excitement as we witness those around us sharing innovative designs and methods, refinement of supplies, and improvement of efficient techniques. Collaborative weaving projects happen every few years, spearheaded by the family of the late master weaver Clarissa Rosal. It is in memory of Clarissa and her clan sister, master weaver Terry Rothkar, that we share this information with you. Raven's Tail Weaving is alive and well on the Northwest Coast. Gunnar's cheesh to my teachers, Clarissa Rizal, and her teacher, Jenny Clanat, and to Kay Parker for continuing to mentor me. To Cheryl for helping reawaken this Raven's Tail Weaving. To my sister, Ursula Hudson, for research and editing of this text. To my husband, Ishmael Hope, for taking care of our five kids and house care while I study and create art. To our nanny, Uma Bhagwati Khalsa, for keeping our kids happy. To my maternal aunts, Aunt Diana and Aunt Irene, who are our inspiring artists themselves and for constantly bouncing and refining creative ideas with me. And to all the weavers working every day now to continue creating gorgeous Northwest Coast Raven's Tail Weavings.